Hi, this is Michael, VK5ZEA, from Port Lincoln in South Australia. Uh, another YouTube video. This one is not directly related to amateur radio, although it is involved with uh, electronics and computers and programming and building. And uh, that's something I've always been interested in, right back from, this will show my, my age, right back in my Commodore 64 days when I used to uh, interface things into the user port on the Commodore 64, uh, like motors and robots and relays and buzzers and sensors. And uh, I was very lucky that I had one of the early Commodore 64s where all of the integrated circuits were socketed because I don't know how many of those input-output chips I blew up connecting the wrong thing to the computer. Anyway, Arduino. After hearing about this sort of uh, device for a few years, and seeing all of the innovative things that people were doing with these devices, I thought oh, I should get one and have a bit of a play around. And this is a Freetronics 11. It's a, an Arduino clone of uh, the Arduino Uno uh, with a few little changes. Um, it's the micro USB or mini USB, I can't remember which one. Uh, with a bit of a prototyping area on board. The LEDs have been moved to the outside edge so you can see them when a shield is plugged in. My first programming attempt, which was just uh, a day ago, was uh, very interesting, I think. Uh, I'll bring the, the shield over. It's got a, a, a basic prototyping shield. And I put a couple of LEDs on there. And these are connected up to output 7 and 8. On the analog input, I have something very interesting. It's a Murata Gyrostar piezoelectric rotation sensor or gyro sensor. It detects uh, rotational movement. Um, basically, it detects movement in that plane um, and it uh, varies an output voltage. It runs on 5 volts and uh, when it's at rest, it, the voltage sits at around 3.2 something volts and as you rotate clockwise it goes up and as you rotate counterclockwise it goes down I think um, and that's just feeding into the analog zero input on the uh, on the shield and I wrote my first sketch to monitor that voltage um, work out where the center point is at rest and then detect movement either clockwise or counterclockwise and then indicate with the LEDs if it's above a certain value, red LED, if it's below a certain level, green LED. And uh, there's a threshold variable that can be changed to change the sensitivity and also a delay loop in there to help correct for jitter from the sensor. So uh, we'll plug it in and uh, I think it's plugged in correctly, yes, and we'll give it some power. There we go. So everything is at rest, no LEDs. Now if we rotate the sensor clockwise, you'll notice the red LED lights up. I'll bring this over here. Counterclockwise, the green LED lights up. When it's stationary, it's actually set fairly fine. Clockwise, red, counterclockwise, green. And I'll set it down so it's easier for me to keep it steady. And you see if I rotate it left, counterclockwise, the green LED lights up, and clockwise, the red LED. Now it's immune to any other rotation, so if I keep it really still and rotate it through that plane, it's hard on this soft surface. There's a little bit of jittering there because I must be rotating it as I'm moving it. It doesn't respond to any other movement in any other plane apart from that one. Um, I salvaged this sensor out of an old Westinghouse mobile satellite phone antenna. And I've got an old one here somewhere. Let me just reach behind me. And uh, we uh, supplied a lot of these on fishing boats for uh, the Optus mobile sat system. And uh, this comes from the US. It's made by Westinghouse. Um, a lot of them, the, the construction of them wasn't overly good. You can see you don't use a D9 connector in a salty environment because they turn to rust. Anyway, apart from that, 
the internal construction this is a little bit of what you see inside that's the rotating mechanism the motor would sit in that spot there um, and there's some slip rings there for the sensor which is in this one I haven't got this one out yet it's all hidden in this foil and uh, it bolts onto that bracket so when I saw this device I thought well that's too good to throw out I'll use that for something sometime and that was about five years ago so uh, it took me that long to uh, work out a, a basic use to light up some LEDs but I, I envisioned some uh, some different usage for this uh, with a wheeled robot two DC motors um, using something like this a uh, uh, motor and a gearbox and an axle with a with a wheel on it even if you have two of these which are identical identical vintage identical motors identical gearboxes I imagine they would still rotate at slightly different speeds um, there's a lot of variables in friction in the gearing and the amount of grease that was applied to the gears um, I thought well if you, if you control the motor speed with a pulse width modulated output so you can adjust the speed you could use a sensor like this to detect rotational movement of the robot. If you want it to go in a straight line, um, you want it to go in a straight line. This will, could detect that it's not going in a straight line and vary the pulse width modulated output to one of the motors to correct for that rotational movement. So uh, your DC powered robot could indeed go in a straight line. Um, so that's, that's one practical use I can think of this and that'll probably be my next project is to make a small wheeled robot that will go in a straight line regardless of wheel slip or gearbox discrepancies or terrain it will correct and continue to travel in a straight line as much as possible now this isn't a compass sensor this doesn't know north or south or east or west or anything like that it doesn't detect the earth's magnetic field um, it detects rotational movement so there will be some potential for it to go in a different line but it will try its best to stay on a straight line regardless of which direction it's facing so there you go okay well that's enough from me for this video this is michael vk5zda from port lincoln in south australia and uh, we'll see you again next time